Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Burfield talking to some of the world's biggest stars, some of my favourite people, and a girl I have loved forever, Jennifer Ellison. How are you? I'm good, thank you. You are delicious. Congratulations. Oh, God, I wish. <laughs> you are looking fabulous, because I know one of the things in researching this interview is that you've gone up and down in weight, and you've been very public about it. It's very brave of you. Why do you need to do that? Because, I mean, you've always been stunning, and you're still stunning. I, I think, basically, when people take pictures of you and they notice yeah. such a change, then it kind of becomes, you know, a focal point. Um, and because I've had three babies in, like, quite a short period of time, um, the press kind of homed in on it. I'm someone who was known for being on the front of men's mags and stuff like that and for, you know, to kind of celebrate and kind of, you know, what a, <laughs> you know, being a model and stuff like that. So um, once I did gain weight, it kind of... It got everyone's attention and the press is home in on it. It's not something I'm embarrassed about. Um, I've got three gorgeous little boys and they came first before going to the gym. Um, and I was very happy, happily married. And everyone knows when you're happily, when you're happy and you're content, the weight creeps on. <laughs> well, it's a good sign, isn't it? I mean, I've had weight battles as well. I was 18 stone at one point. I'm the lowest I've ever been. And, and it's a battle every day. Is your day consumed like mine by what I can't eat more than what I can? Um, I try to, what I try to do is try and be good Monday to Friday and then have a little break on a weekend. Um, because I do think it's important to be normal as well and not be obsessed with it and let it control you. Um, you know, I did have to make serious changes. I did cut things out. I did go to the gym. I do train five times a week. Um, and that kind of training with a PT five times helps me not be as strict with my diet. Um, but yeah, it is, it's hard work. And I'm one of these people that, since I've stopped the level of dancing that I was that I was doing, it just creeps on. I only have to look at a donut and it's like literally underneath my chin. <laughs> I think the last time we spoke was in Chicago. I mean, and in those days, you had to be an athlete to get through that show. And as you say, then you have babies and there's bigger priorities and frankly, more important things than standing on a stage entertaining people. Your whole life, really, whether it's me coming to see you in Chicago or some snotty journalist having a pop at you because you've got mummy tummy or whatever they called it, um, they're constantly judging you. That's the price you pay, I guess, for being famous. Yeah, and you know, when you, what you've got to do is you've got to take the, the goods with the bad and, you know, we have a, a job doing things that we absolutely love. Um, sometimes we can be paid very well for it and, you know, you've got to accept that, you know, while you'll sell an interview or, you know, sell photographs of yourself, that people are going to have an interest and then when you don't look great, when you don't look good, when you're having a bad day, they still want to know about you. So it's just one of those things that I've never, ever kind of got you know got upset over it's something that I, I've kind of took on my stride and you know I've been in I was in Brooks Harbour when I was 12 so it's something that I've grown up with as well so yeah I've got to take with the rough with the smooth you've never known another life in a way you've always been in show business and you are remarkably talented and I, I suppose that's great at this point that you've got the family life which is great and then you've got your professional life and here we're sat at the Winter Gardens in Blackpool you're coming here this Christmas I think it's from the 18th of December through the 8th of January in Peter Pan and again it might be one of the biggest roles of your career because it seems like they're building this whole show around you um, yeah, I think, you know, we've got a great cast um, and I think what the amazing thing is, is the writer is really passionate about bringing us to the roles and um, that's obviously why, you know, Hook's a woman and stuff, <laughs> um, because she she wants to get a bit of grit into the character, a bit of bit of depth into the character, which is really exciting from our point of view, because normally when you do a panto, it's just she's behind you and you know whereas this is more of a musical um, and more of a, of a, a showcase really so it's really exciting that way and I'm really looking forward to to play in a role that I've never played before and to really get my teeth into it. Because this, this is switching it around isn't it because Peter Pan's normally played by a girl and hooks a man and that's the opposite in this production. Yeah it's the complete opposite so it's going to be interesting and I'm like about six foot smaller than Peter Pan <laughs> so I don't know how that's going to work. I'm going to be looking up to him um, but yeah it's 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 going to be <clears throat> it's going to be exciting and I guess Hook is still the baddie so therefore that's a change for you as well because you've always been the beautiful glamour puss in the show whether it be the fairy godmother flying in or whatever so this is completely different for you 
Yeah, it is completely different. I have played um, with a queen once and I absolutely loved it. <laughs> um, I'd go out on the school shows in the morning and the kids would be like going bright red, the veins would be popping out the heads and I'd just like, the show would go on for like 20 minutes longer because I'd just be winding them up. I absolutely love it. <laughs> Seeing little ones get so lost in theatre is like amazing for me and it's something that I get a real kick out being a mum as well. Seeing these little kids who've all, they've all come with the teacher, they're all sat on the chairs, they can't see over the chairs and they're just getting so lost in the in the show I it's it's like I have a ball with it I love it I was watching that documentary about a year or so ago and it showed what passion you have for the next generation of performer there's something very selfless in that in giving your time to others when you could be just focusing on yourself that means a lot to you to give something back doesn't it yeah, 100%. Um, I, I've opened recently a school and now we've got a college, um, Performing Arts College, where we deliver BTEC Level 3. Um, so getting the students, the, the training and the qualification and the, you know, the foot in the door into the industry and not having to, you know, for Northern kids, not having to go to London, that was something that I was really passionate about. Um, and when I was growing up, I was like, I want to create a college that's as good as the London colleges but is it up north because it's not fair we all have to not only have to find the, the expense and the money for the, the leotards the dance shoes everything, but we have to like find accommodation in London you know so it's, it's, it's difficult and it was always a passion of mine and I've created it now and we've got like 60 students and we're delivering the level 3 government funded qualification BTEC to them so you know it's a massive achievement for me it is something that I'm very 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 passionate about we've just won 68 world gold, gold medals at the Dance World Cup you know it's just like the kid the, what's coming out of the, that studios now for the talent up north is just amazing and it's a massive thing that I have always been passionate about. Is your life perfect now? Have you got the dream where you've got that half with the family that's going well and this half which is show business which is going well and you've married the two to work together? I don't think anything's ever perfect is it? Um, I, I am in a very very fortunate place where as as I was getting older, I knew that the roles would start to get less and less. I, I had children to be a mum. I wanted to drop them off and pick them up from school. I didn't want to be on tour for the rest of my life. I didn't want to be in the West End for the rest of my life, which I absolutely loved. But when, are you, when you're a mum, it's different. You think of things differently. So I decided to open the school. Fortunately, the school's gone from success to success and then has developed us into opening the college. and. I am very fortunate that I can go to work, do something that I am so passionate about, that I love, that I was born to do, and still be at home with my babies and still have a normal life and, and not be living out of a suitcase. It is tough being a woman in show business, isn't it? Because you can't be at home and at work. You can't be in London and at home. I mean, it, it is sort of a compromise constantly. When we look at the beginning of your career, I mean, and you were the pin-up. You were it, weren't you, for a while? You were the girl that the papers loved to put in. And then we look at you now. Do you look at, back at those memories with fondness uh, or do you wish that you'd have done it differently? Because, as I said, truly, I mean, as I grew up, you were it. You were the it girl that we all fancied and thought was delicious, truly. <laughs> um, no, I do you know what? I've got no regrets at all, ever. Um, every every decision that I've made, every choice that I've made, every job I've taken has led me to where I am today. And I've got the most amazing husband, the most three beautiful kids and the best career. Um, and, you know, if things would have taken a slightly different direction and I would have ended up focusing more on acting and moving to America who knows where I'd be and I don't think I could be as happy so I don't regret one single thing people say oh do you regret doing the magazine shoots because you could have done more straight acting no I don't because those magazine shoots bought me a lovely home they bought me you know the best quality of life my family who some of them have lost now are treated to the best holidays and to the best experiences. So no, I don't regret anything. Is that a great joy of success that you can pass it on, especially when you're like us from the North and you've got people around you who are not in this world, are they? They don't know anything. And to be able to pass stuff on is a great thrill. It was, um, you know, it was incredible. And like we have lost me granny, it was like a mum to me. The things that I treated her to and the experiences that she had because of the job that I was doing, you know, that's the reason, one of the reasons that I started it in the first place. Yeah, I love it, but it was to treat the people who I love 
to nice things and I've been very fortunate to have been able to do that and looking back when you do lose someone to be able to have given them you know experiences that you know were once in a lifetime I don't regret a single thing I was talking to Jake earlier having lost his brother and his dad um, that's got to be the toughest isn't it losing someone close and I, I've still got my mum and dad I don't know about you but, but the, losing my gran was tough as well they're the moments when you realise none of it really matters you've got to be happy at home or it's not going to work 100% and yeah it, you know you do all this what for um, I'm not that hungry and career driven anymore and I do it for, to provide nice things and to have a nice lifestyle and to be able to do lovely things with my family and again Phantom must have been one of those moments when you went I've made it I mean it doesn't get any bigger than that and being cast in that was an affirmation not only of your credibility as an actress but also your pure talent because he could have picked anyone I loved it um, it was a once in a lifetime opportunity and I'm very fortunate to have been able to do it and yeah I was I think I look back at it now when he, my little boys it was on Sky the other week and my little boys were like wow mummy that's you and that's something that we're going to have forever you know it's 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 a I just I'm so lucky to have been a part of it what an incredible life and career. You're so credible, you're so relevant and so fantastic live. I think that's where people need to see you through all the interviews you've ever done. Where you, when you're on stage, knocking it dead is really incredible. We wish you all the best with Peter Pan coming to the Winter Gardens in Blackpool this Christmas. Have a wonderful run and I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you, Thank Jennifer. Thank you very much. Thank you.